All right, so this is how you use the MTS machine located in a manufacturing building. First, you start off by loading up the station manager from the desktop uh, and choosing the Kunal profile. This is set up such that all the displacement and force channels that we will be using will be loaded. This takes a little bit of time, so you can go ahead and do this right whenever you arrive. And it will gradually populate all of the windows that we'll be using. So what you'll see here on the station manager and in some of the other windows are all of the controls that you'll need. The first thing you need to do is reset in the lock one. This allows you to control the hydraulic power unit and hydraulic manifolds. To turn these on, you turn them on in stages, first by selecting the two yellow bars on the top. Then after those stop blinking, select the three bars in the top row. That'll turn green. Move down to the second row. Click the two bars. When they stop blinking yellow, click the three bars next to them. They'll turn green. You'll hear a series of motors turn on in the back room. That's how you know the hydraulic system is powering up. Now you have the ability to enable manual command and either by clicking the arrow buttons, holding down on the slider, or dragging the slider left and right in the manual command window, you can actuate the hydraulic piston on the MTS machine. Um, you can use fine control, coarse control, or uh, really coarse control. And you can watch the actuator move up and down as you do each one of these. Uh, whenever you're using really coarse control, like here, be careful. This thing is strong. It will crush whatever is in its way. Now, you'll go ahead and install whatever kind of test fixtures you'll be using. Here we're setting up for a four-point bending test. To install the fixtures, you'll use the hydraulic gripper valves located on the right-hand side of the machine, both lower and upper. Again, these are very powerful things, so don't get your fingers caught in them. Uh, be sure you have your test fixtures aligned properly before you insert them or before you grip onto them. Um, and the lower piston rotates so that you can do final alignment of your fixture. Use the force offset button to get rid of any pre-stress that is artificially induced by clamping. Lower the actuator onto the piece and make sure there is no more pre-stress again offset the force and displacement. Now, to create a new specimen, click on the specimen editor in the name template box. Call it something descriptive like beam test and then end with an underscore. Click on the new button to create a new specimen. This is your data file and set the default to reuse this template again. Then from the specimen drop down menu, select your beam test specimen this will be your data file. Now you're all ready to get started testing. Go ahead and disable or untick the enable manual command button. Then up at the top of the specimen editor window, go ahead and toggle the lock button that switches from edit to execute mode and click play. This begins the test running according to the procedure that is in the upper right window. Uh, we didn't edit the procedure in this video, but that would be where you specify things like loading rate, uh, maximum deflection, etc. In the bottom right window, the scope, you'll see a trace of your force versus displacement. You can also change this to be time versus displacement, etc. And by moving around the offset, scaling buttons and auto offset keys, you can change the size and location of this trace so that you can watch the test as it proceeds. Also notice in the lower left hand corner you can see real time output from channel 1 force and channel 2 displacement. So once your specimen is sufficiently destroyed, you can go ahead and stop 
go test. And you can always restart if you want to, but you'll know when to stop when the test trace starts to get nonlinear or you know it fails, force value starts to drop precipitously. Then just do everything in reverse. Switch back to edit mode and enable manual command so that you can control the position of the actuator again. Go ahead and lower the actuator. Remember positive means lower because tension is positive. So as the bottom actuator moves down, you release your part. And if you're not testing again, go ahead and release the top fixture. Sometimes things get stuck after you release them, so just apply some percussive maintenance. Hit it with a hammer. Take off your fixtures, and you can click all off. That turns down all the hydraulic systems. Then you can close out the window. Yes, you're really sure you want to quit, and no, you don't want to save any of the new options to default. To locate your specimen data file, it is right in the folder called Specimens on the desktop. Uh, this is going to be a CSV file, saved as a DAT file, but editable as a CSV, comma separated values. Uh, you'll see you have all of the time, displacement, and force information available to you. Uh, you can plop this down in Excel and edit it, plot it to your heart's content.